You might have seen that 20 Strong has cracked the top of the hotness, and you also might be wondering, what the heck is this game? I was wondering the same exact thing just a couple days ago before this arrived on my doorstep, and I've had a chance to dive into each of the decks, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what this game is. This is just to give you an idea of what this system looks like and what you can expect from it. 20 Strong is a game system, pretty simply put. The system revolves around 20 dice, three of which are stat dice, health, strategy, and recovery. Health is pretty simple. Strategy has to do with the number of items that you can hold, as well as the number of attempts you get at defeating or completing an objective before you have to end a round and suffer the consequences. And the last dice stat is recovery. Recovery has nothing to do with your health. It has everything to do with your dice. There's 17 dice in the game that come in five different colors. They have misses, crits, and hits on them. The weakest color being yellow with four misses on it. The strongest color being red with zero misses and all other colors are, are in between. And the idea of recovery is really important because as you commit die, roll die, apply them, they are exhausted and they go into this exhausted pool. And the only way to get them back is with that recovery stat. The number of dice that you can get back is equal to your recovery stat. That's something that you're trying to upgrade throughout the game. So you're using dice to defeat conflict cards. Conflict cards are mostly lower level baddies that you're using as stepping stones and ways to upgrade to get your character ready to face the end boss, which is a scion in the hoplo deck, a tyrant in the too many bones deck, or a real high level bug in the Solar Sentinels deck. There's many similarities in each and every game. In all of them, you are selecting conflict cards to battle. Once you select those, the process of the game is pretty similar in all decks. So every deck has heroes. Every deck has a kind of end game boss and every deck has kind of lower level minions that you have to fight to get to the said boss. And all of them, you go into an engagement phase and there's two phases in strategy and resolve. Strategy is where you're choosing the dice, rolling the dice, applying the dice. And if you have a higher strategy stat, like we had discussed earlier, you can kind of go through that cycle a couple different times, depending on how high that stat is. And really, you're just trying to defeat the things. In the resolve phase, you suffer damage. You have to deal with any after effects that are printed on the cards. You're also exhausting all of the dice that you've committed and then using your recovery stat to recover the number of dice equal to that recovery stat. And pretty simply, you rinse and repeat. All of them have a little bit of a different in-game trigger, but you'll eventually get there. You'll activate the boss and you try to beat them in the same exact way. The strategy in this game really comes in weighing the cost benefit of the rewards that are printed on all of these conflict cards. That's how you upgrade your stats. That's how you get items. That's how you get one-time bonuses. That's how you get some of your exhausted dice back from your exhausted dice pool. There's really a benefit to having to go through as many of these baddies as possible because they're gonna get your character ready for that boss battle. And pretty simply, if you beat the boss, you beat the game. I mean, that's it. There's a Too Many Bones deck, there's a Hoplomachus deck, and there's a Solar Sentinels deck. My review on each of those is coming at a later time, but just know they do function a little bit differently. While all of the core kind of battling and activation and resolution, all of that stuff that I just had described is the same. There are some alteration rules. Some of the bigger differences are how you're activating these conflict cards. So each of the three decks set up a little bit differently and, and that setup relates to how you're going to end up choosing which foes to face each and every round. With the Hoplo deck, you're jumping around a pyramid of cards that represents Mount Vesuvius. If you defeat the three Primuses, you get to go and face the Scion. In Too Many Bones, you have one in five point baddies. And similar to the full game, you have a baddie BQ on encounters. And depending on the day you're in, will determine how many of these baddies you'll face. Solar Sentinels is probably the most straightforward. You have three stacks of these bugs and you're deciding which one to activate. There's special orange versions that make you activate that. And if you select a card that hasn't activated an additional enemy, you have to activate another one that could cascade into multiple bugs that you're fighting. But the gist is you're activating something to fight in all three of these decks. In the Hoplo and Too Many Bones decks, there's definitely aspects that relate to the base kind of core games that really make them feel unique. But overall, it's kind of all of the same game. Roll dice, defeat bad guys, 
get strong enough to defeat the baddest of the bad guys and that's it but the system is really exciting i'm only a few plays in and i definitely see why it's gotten so much praise up to this point if you've never played a chip theory game go ahead and check out some of my playthroughs here and on that note i'm out of here have a great day